So British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has finally decided to call an election. After cozying up in the number 10 Downing Street for 575 days without a direct mandate from the people, he's finally giving the nation a chance to speak. It's about time. Besides, I cannot bear another moment of Westminster journalists gossiping about possible election dates like excitable school kids. Spoiler, it's set for July 4th. Why now? Well, why not? The Conservatives are trailing by a monumental 20 points in the polls, a deficit no incumbent government has ever overcome. Sunak's popularity has plummeted to John Major levels. His grand promise to stop the boats remains unfulfilled. His lackluster press conference looked so scripted, it could have been penned by Labour. And some joker outside was blasting D. Reem's new Labour anthem just to rub it in. Still, it seems Sunak and his crew figured that things can get only worse from here, so might as well rip off the band-aid. Sunak's ascent to conservative leadership in 2022 marked the party's retreat from the populist Brexit-driven energy that had briefly revived it and handed it a massive victory in 2019. After the trifecta of Covid, Ukraine and the bizarre Liz Truss episode, the party elders thought what they needed was a technocrat to steady the ship and arrest their plummeting poll numbers. 18 months on, all Sunak has done is prove that the so-called adults in the room have no clue what voters want or what they are doing. Today's announcement of inflation figures was supposed to be a consolation for cash-strapped citizens. Prices are still over 20% higher than they were in mid-2021. The message, you are poor, but you could be poorer, isn't exactly a winner at the polls. The conservative deserve the electoral thrashing that seems to be on the horizon. In 2019, they were handed a golden opportunity to reshape the party to reflect Britain's forgotten working classes who had backed Brexit and trusted Boris Johnson to see it through. Instead, the Tories have reverted to their backstabbing, technocratic ways, ignoring the new political and cultural divides. Labour, now under new management, but still tied to extreme environmentalism and identity politics, made it easy for the Conservatives to seem like the voice of reason against a left that's gone off the rails. Yet, all the Tories have managed is to mildly slow the relentless march of eco-austerity and woke ideology. But don't mistake the Conservatives' collapse for Labour triumph. Keir Starmer's strategy is entirely reliant on Tory failures. Outside the Westminster bubble, no one is excited about him. He seems to have no solid principles other than his desire to become Prime Minister. Former Tory voters might be abandoning their party, but only a few are turning to Labour. The recent local elections hinted at a disheartened electorate, with Labour's historic swing in the Blackpool South by election overshadowed by a historically low turnout. This general election is likely to be similarly lifeless. While voters are clearly fed up with the Tories, few believe that a change in government will bring any meaningful change to the country. After a brief period where party politics was actually interesting, with democracy and sovereignty on the line, we are back to two groups of technocrats squabbling over minutia. Not that there's nothing to fear from Labour, the party and its upper middle class metropolitan bases are fully committed to the worst ideas of our time. Their plans to decarbonize the electricity grid by 2030, introduce an identitarian race equality act and revive gender self-ID are just a few grim examples. This seems to be no absurd divisive policy that Labour won't champion. But voters might struggle to see much difference given the Tories' half-hearted opposition to these same ideas. Now is the moment for Britain to choose its future, declared a drenched Rishi Sunak this evening. Doesn't even really buy that, does he? We seem doomed to another election cycle where the stakes are limited to the fortunes of two main parties, where big ideas are foreign to politics, where ordinary people and their desire for a more democratic life are sidelined. Nevertheless, any opportunity to shake up the political snow globe should be welcomed. To send a message to the inept political class, whether through a protest vote, a spoiled ballot or by abstaining altogether. The British people are yearning for a different, better future, not to mention competent leadership in these perilous times. We just await a party, a movement or a leader who can actually offer a genuine alternative.